Hey dude, so nowadays it seems like cell phones are everywhere. In fact, right now there's more cell phones than there are people on planet Earth. But it wasn't always this way. Back in the day, a portable cell phone was just an idea. That is, until one day, somebody decided to make that idea into a reality. This is the story of the device that changed communication forever, and the man behind it. This is... Okay, let's go back. Before the cell phone, there was really only two options when it came to calling somebody. You could use your landline at home, or you could go out into the street and pay for a phone booth. Both options were restrictive. They both often had wait times before you could use it. They weren't private or portable. And let's be honest, not everybody wanted to carry change around with them just to make calls. People wanted to make calls on the go with their own personal phone. Enter the car phone. First invented in the late 1940s, it became a popular means of communication by the 1970s. The car phone used your car's antenna to pick up a signal. It was the first real wireless phone. The tech was invented by Bell Laboratories, which was owned by AT&T, and the hardware was initially produced by Motorola. It was the most popular and really only way to have a private call on the go. But there were some problems. For one, it was huge. Popular car phones weighed up to 80 pounds, and they took up the whole trunk of your car. On top of that, it used your car's power, so it only worked when the car was running. This meant that it really wasn't a mobile option. It was restricted to wherever your car was. It was also super expensive. The new devices charged you by the minute for calls. It was a great option and saw massive popularity, but it was still restrictive. People were clamoring for a portable handset phone that they could use on the go. And by the late 1960s, Bell Laboratories thought they had come up with something. They announced they had an idea called cellular telephony. They proposed an arrangement of cell towers in a hexagonal layout that would allow users to connect wirelessly with the proper receiver. They were closed-minded though. Their new device had to use your car's antenna meaning it was no more portable than the car phones that already existed. As a vehicle drives from one cell to another, advanced electronic equipment automatically transfers the call by telephone line to another cell without the caller knowing it. Obviously, this is not what people wanted, so their competitors quickly stepped in. Motorola, who often worked together with Bell Labs, saw a flaw in this plan. Motorola exec Dr. Martin Cooper and his team decided to make it the right way. Why don't we build a cellular system that's the way it ought to be? They ditched all of their engineering projects and put all efforts into building a portable cell phone. Here's the pitch. A handset with a battery and a built-in antenna, making it totally portable. Using nothing but existing Motorola patents, a team of six engineers got to work building the first cell phone in November of 1972. Three months later, they had a working prototype, which is just insane. It took six guys three months to build the first cell phone. Dr. Cooper has said in interviews that their model is far more complicated than a modern phone. Sure, modern phones had components, that his phone didn't have, like a touchscreen or camera. But remember, the infrastructure didn't exist to create a phone back then. If Apple wants to make a new camera for their new iPhone, they turn to their camera development lab, who spends millions of dollars a year developing cameras. In 1972, Motorola didn't really have any resources to turn to to make a cellular telephone. They just invented it themselves and they did it in three months. They called their new prototype the Dynatech. Fun fact, only two of these prototypes exist, and at least one of them is in the possession of Dr. Cooper. Weighing over four pounds, Motorola's prototype had a 30-minute battery life, and it took 10 hours to charge. You'll notice that this prototype looks a little different from the final model, but more on that later. On April 3rd, 1973, Cooper held a press conference demonstrating the system. Right after the conference, Dr. Cooper was talking to a radio reporter, and he figured he'd give the reporter a real-world demonstration. So, they walked out onto the street, and Cooper made the first cell phone call in history. And who did he call? He called up his rival at Bell Labs, which is just hilarious. He said, Hi Joel, I'm calling you from a cell phone. But a real cell phone, a personal, handheld, portable cell phone. There was silence on the other end of the line. Dr. Cooper later admits that he didn't even know if the phone would work. In that first call, we didn't know it was gonna be historic in any way at all. We were only worried about one thing. Is the phone gonna work when we turn it on? Fortunately, it did. So they had a working device. They released it quickly to the public and it became a household item. Or did it? So 
So Motorola didn't end up releasing this phone for another 10 years. 10 years, that's crazy. In all fairness though, they did have a good reason. During those 10 years, they managed to slim it down and give it some better components. They also added a screen and memory to store numbers. After 10 years, their prototype ended up looking a lot different. Another reason it took them so long was the cell tower system. Dr. Cooper likes to talk about the rivalry between Bell Labs and Motorola, but they actually worked together to get this up and running. Over those 10 years, the two companies developed and implemented AMPS, the first real cellular network. It used cell towers to transmit a cellular signal wirelessly. This is part of what we now consider to be 1G. The world in 1983 was really ready for this phone. There had been articles out since that press conference in 1973 about the tech, but not a single mobile phone had hit the market in the decade since. And when Motorola finally released it, the world went nuts. It's like how the whole world went nuts when the Apple Vision Pro was announced. Everybody was talking it, and unlike the Vision Pro, Everybody wanted it. They called it the Dynatech 8000X. The prototype was much slimmer now, at only 1.7 pounds. It could store up to 30 numbers for you, and it had the same battery life. 30 minutes of calling, 10 hour charging. That's not really their fault though. Battery tech back then just wasn't good yet. Here's the kicker though. It was $4,000. Adjusted for inflation, that's over $12,000. Imagine spending $12,000 on a phone. That's more than some people spend on their car. The high price meant it was really only a device that wealthy people could afford. It didn't sell in high numbers like many phones today, but it was still popular. Movies and TV shows like Wall Street and Saved by the Bell depicted characters using the new technology and sort of glamorized it to the public. It became an iconic device that many people wanted, but few could actually have. And it stayed that way for a long time but not every product can last forever. Motorola kept updating the design, most notably making it a little bit smaller and giving it all sorts of screens until it was discontinued in 1994. This one right here is one of those updated models. It's slightly smaller than the original and it has a different screen. This one was my uncle's and he used to carry it around in his back pocket and honestly, I don't know how he pulled that off. During the 1980s, the Dynatech saw little competition in terms of other companies making cell phones. The Dynatech was like way more advanced than anything on the market at the time, but that was to its detriment. Because it was such a high-tech device, it remained relatively expensive for its whole lifespan. Motorola also released the Microtech in 1989, and calling this thing micro was just crazy. It was still huge. It was the first real mobile flip phone, and it was marketed as a more portable alternative to the Dynatech. Okay, how much did it cost? $3,500, okay, back to square one. As you can imagine, cheaper alternatives started to seep in, but they weren't really alternatives. Enter the pager. The pager very quickly eclipsed the cell phone, just because it was a fraction of the price. It didn't offer any of the same features as a cell phone. It was really an accessory, but it offered the modern citizen a way to communicate with others. You could send short messages, which gave birth to texting. It was a wildly popular technology. The pager outsold Motorola's phone by leaps and bounds, but they kept selling the Dynatech and the Microtech. The pager was just astronomically cheaper than the Dynatech. But just like how an F1 car doesn't replace a Camry, the pager didn't replace the cell phone. The Motorola phones continued to sell in low volumes until the end of its lifespan, but something big was on the horizon, something that would shake up the mobile phone business for a second time. Hey dudes, real quick. I don't have sponsors on this channel and I'm so close to 10K subs, so a subscription would go a long way. Thanks, back to the video. Like I said, something huge was about to happen. Motorola discontinued the Dynatech and the Microtech in 1994 and 1996 respectively. Despite selling all right, the phones proved too expensive to compete with the pager. So Motorola set out to shake things up once again. 1996 was a big year for phones. The lines between pager and phone were starting to blur. Blackberry made the interactive pager and Nokia released a bunch of more pocketable phones. The market for a more affordable and portable phone was wide open. So Motorola releases the StarTac later that year. With the introduction of a lithium battery in some models, the phone was smaller, more more portable and lasted longer. On top of that, the phone was produced more cheaply, the parts were more available, and it was mass produced, allowing the price to drop to only $1,000, which yes, is still a lot, but it was a fraction of what older models used to cost. The StarTac came in fun colors, and it had a fun flipping mechanism. Their marketing was clear. This wasn't just a phone, it was a lifestyle, a fashion statement. StarTac, the world's smallest, lightest cellular phone. The 2000s saw a huge boom in stylish, unique, fashionable phones. And it can all be traced back to this phone right here. Heck, that's like what half my channel is about. The StarTac was eventually replaced by the Razer in 2004, and the rest is history. Throughout the years, Motorola has led two separate breakthroughs in smartphone design. Their creations led to what we have today. In short, without Motorola, things would be a lot different. Thank you to Juno Knight, Tohru, Gustavo Rodriguez, and Aaron for being members. I have a bunch of videos just like this one. 
party on dudes. Yeah.